The Arvada Center for the Arts and Humanities has a new ceramic studio boasting 16 potter's wheels, lots of revamped space, and dozens of classes for everyone from beginner to professional. It's considered one of the best in Colorado, and because of that, it draws some of the best to share their craft with others, people such as Bob Smith. I heard it described once by somebody as sort of physical poetry. At one time, he planned to be a lawyer or a teacher, but then a class he took made a strong case for a change of careers. One day ended up in a clay studio with a friend of mine and was just amazed that people were slapping dirt down on a spinning wheel and making things happen and I was just enamored from the very beginning. Clay itself, the, the sensual quality of clay when it's wet on the wheel is uh, um, wonderful. And when you're forming uh, a shape, all a pot is is enclosed air. So when you're making that volume of air bigger, it's a wonderful, expansive feeling. So it's just the tactile quality of clay is pretty uh, hypnotic. Bob Smith's studio is in Idledale, and his work is in a dozen or more galleries around the country. But it's here at the Arvada Center where he finds a way to share his passion for clay with others. I really can't say enough about the Arvada Center. I've taught here on and off uh, since the 80s, and um, uh, the various people who have worked with me without qualification have been fantastic and a lot of the potters and clay people that you see around Denver and the Front Range uh, either started here or at one time studied here or, or are now teaching here. Bob himself is back at the Arvada Center teaching spring classes for experienced potters and even if you've never tried clay before there is lots here to get fired up about though Bob says most find out quickly if it's for them. If you like to uh, get messy and play with earth and fire and water and air then clay will be for you and most people um, know it from the beginning they, they know if they're attracted to it. For those who do get hooked an endless array of techniques awaits creative hands. Bob's current class focuses on some of his favorites. The kind of pottery that I do is, uh, for the most part, raku. Uh, so the, the uh, and raku is a low-fired process where you stick pots into a kiln that's already at temperature. Raku fires at a mere 1,800 degrees, compared to 2,300 or more for stonewares, says Bob. He also uses techniques such as smoke, done by plunking a still very hot piece into a container with something like straw. It ignites the straw and, uh, and makes billows of smoke. His class is tailored to potters looking to explore such alternative firing techniques. We're going to s sort of delve into non-stoneware, non-porcelain, non-large kiln, uh, high fire uh, firings. We're going to look at raku, which is what I do. The question I'm probably asked most is where do ideas come from? Yeah, and I sort of jokingly always say that they came, they come from the first pot that I ever made and everything has been a variation on that since. Um, you go bigger, you go wider, um, but your hands don't get good without making pots. You make pots and then you make pots and then you make pots. And you learn about tools along the way. More clay than I actually have left. I, I've made it relatively thin here. Learning is ongoing. In 2006, nearly 900 registered for classes here. The Arvada Center also hosts about 500 school children each month who visit the ceramic studio as part of the Arts Day program. With all that going on, who knows, your first step into the ceramic studio may put you in a whole new world, just as it did for Bob years ago. This is the stuff when I saw it the first time, people saw people doing this sort of thing, that it was just it's like magical to see this.